Now, especially when you're just getting started with Kubernetes, it's okay to write pure YAML files to understand how those resources work, how they interact with your Kubernetes cluster, how you set up deployments and how ultimately your running pods are managed by other Kubernetes resources such as services and so on. Writing pure YAML files really allows you to dig into those resources and the specifications and understand how Kubernetes interprets the pure YAML files into those resources. However, once you start going a bit further and wanting to advance your cluster management and maybe the kind of applications that you deploy to your cluster, you want to use tools that make your life easier. So this week, I'm going to look at some of them. Today, I'm going to be looking at Customize. For those who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Anais, and this is 100 Days of Kubernetes, the challenge where I aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. So this video is going to be particular for those who want to teach and improve their teaching, because I'm a beginner, and this is quite from a beginner perspective how I discover resources and how I learn those and understand them, as well as for those who want to have a really hands-on, inclusive way of understanding what customers is about and just have an overview. So let's get started. So the reason that I'm not trying you some presentation is that I'm really horrible making presentations and it would bore you to death. So instead, we're going to provide practical drawings that help you understand what I'm actually talking about. So usually when you are doing anything related to Kubernetes, you want to have Kubernetes resources, Kubernetes manifests. So this is a file. Okay. This is a piece of paper, or in your case, a file in your computer that's called test or something something dot yaml. And that specifies several different things. Now you take this paper or file, whatever you want to call it in that case, and you give it to your cluster. Now that is your um, cluster with a running master node and some worker nodes that are running as well. Now the master node, like explained in previous videos, has an API server. And that API server is responsible to communicate with you through kubectl. Okay, so you give this file to your cluster and then Kubernetes is with various different components and processes responsible for matching the state of your cluster, what's happening with your cluster, to the desired state that is defined within this file. Okay, so that's happening. And then you have something deployed on your cluster in running pods. Those are pods that are running within your cluster. Okay, so once we have that, that's all good. <laughs> we might want to change something to this file, right? We might want to change that or we might want to have multiple clusters. So this is another cluster and this is another cluster. And on each of those clusters, we want to run a version of our deployment, for example. The deployment. Okay. Now, in each of those cases, so let's say we have here our testing cluster, this is our testing, and this is our staging, or I like to call it, this is a Jedi youngling, and this is a Jedi master, and here in production, and then we have some stages in between. Anyway, so the main point is <laughs> that you want to have, for each of those different environments, you might want to have different um, tags within your, within your file. You might want to have different resources that are defined within your deployment. However, you don't want to really recreate 500 different lines of YAML for all of those different environments, right? You don't necessarily want to do that, especially if you're using pure YAML. And in some cases, you won't use pure YAML over some other solutions such as Helm. So I don't know those cases yet, but there are cases where you want to do that. So you want to customize, customize the different aspects that are defined within a file. So let's take a look at how customize does that. So what you can do getting set up with customize and just, yeah, trying it out for the first time, set up a simple deployment YAML file and a simple maybe service YAML file. So you have two Kubernetes resources that you can deploy in your cluster and then you can use customize with it. So I have here my really simple deployment YAML file. 
you might not even want to specify a lot in those files since that will make it more specific to the environment that you set it up. So the more you specify within your deployment file, the more your cluster will know what's specific to that deployment and the less it will allow you to customize it, right? So you want to define the most possible in your customization file, probably the way I understand it. So same with your service YAML file. I just have like the bare minimum as much as possible. <laughs> and then you have a customization file. So wherever you have Kubernetes resources that you want to set up, they should refer like to, they should be within your YAML files. So they should have access to them. They should know where they are basically. And we will look at two different ways of telling customization, customize in the customization YAML of where your files are at. The first one is here. So you basically just specify the resources that customize should know about. So in this case, I want to, to know about my deployment YAML file and about my service YAML file. And then here's where the magic comes in. I hope the intonation is right. Um, is where I tell it that as a common label that the owner is me. So in all of those resources, I tell customers, hey, the owner is called Anais of those files. Please provide that label. So let's deploy it in our cluster or see how that um, finished resource with customers actually looks like. Okay, it was not the right indentation. Intentation? Anyway, <laughs> so this was not supposed to be that, it was supposed to be like that. So it didn't work at the beginning, as you can see, it threw an error, so I corrected it. Um, just trial and error, you know, you will get it at some point. <laughs> and so now I can see here it added, basically if I say customize built, and then the directory, which is the current directory, um, where it should do it, where I have my customization file, um, it will build my Kubernetes resources, in this case, the service. And as you can see here, I have a label edit, which is owner Anais. And that label I do not have here within my service YAML file. So this was just added by customize. Um, same thing for my deployment YAML file. So as you can see here, this is my deployment and I have everything that I have also within my deployment YAML file. However, in addition, I have here this label now called owner Anais. So that's applied to all of my resources. So as you can see, um, I have for all the resources that I have here, it will, where it defines labels, it actually defines that I'm the owner of it. So that's probably not where I actually want to have it, but that's a good start. Now let's zoom in again so you can see everything that I'm doing here. So I'm currently on which cluster I am. Okay, I'm on my kind cluster, that should work. And now I want to go ahead and say kubectl create and then minus k and I want to create the resources with customize. So instead of using the uh, minus, I say minus, no, <laughs> uh, minus f for five flag, um, I can use minus k and then it will create my resources. As you can see here, it created both my server's React application and my deployment React application. So I could now go ahead and say kubectl get pods. And I would see here, well, those pods from the video yesterday, which I should probably clean up. I didn't know they were running here. So good to know. Oh, nice. Check your resources before you use them. Anyway, and I have here both of my just created resources right now. Okay, so as you can see, I restructured everything a bit. I now have the, uh, well, all of the resources that I just defined within my base folder. So those are pretty much the same resources that I used before. And then I have an overlay folder. And within the overlay folder, I have a Jedi master for one environment and in a Jedi youngling for the other environment folder. And within both of those, I have specific customization YAML file. Now, each of those are specific to the respective environment. So for example, if I were within the Jedi master to run customize and then build and put it into my deployment.yaml, let's name that in this case, Jedi master.yaml and then cat and Jedi master.yaml. I can show you that within here, within that file that we just created with the specific 
customization that I have within this customize file. So I have here, as you can see, namespace master. It should be deployed to a namespace master within my cluster. Um, and in the environment, namespace in the master. So here I have this label, namespace master. And here, Jedi dev react application. So I could go ahead and deploy this resource to my cluster now. I could say qcal and well, let's use the previous file. So qcal and then minus f or apply minus f and it will create both my um, my service. It will create both my service and my deployment to my cluster that is basically specified here. So it will access the deployment and the service YAML file within my actual within my base um, folder and deploy it on my cluster. So I can now see, um, let's say kubectl uh, get all in namespace master. And as you can see here, I have my deployment Jedi Dev React application, and then I have my um, my service as well. I think that's my service. Those are my different parts. Anyway, so as you can see, I have all of that. Oh, you can't really see. Oh. Let me close this now so you can see it better when I do it a second time. So now we want to deploy it also to our other environment, which is the Jedi Yangling. So I can go ahead and say customize and put that into my Jedi Yangling YAML. And then I just deploy that file that I just created. So if I say again, cat and then Jedi Yangling YAML. Again, I have here my file that basically defines the resources that have just been created. But instead of with the namespace master, I have no namespace Yangling. And it's the same kind of name of the application. However, in this case, I want to deploy to the youngling environment instead of the master environment. So I can now take this file that has all of my custom var values, variables that I defined and customize and actually go ahead and apply that. So kubectl and then uh, apply and file. It was called Jedi youngling dot YAML. And this will create again my resources. However, in this case, I am actually in kubectl get, um, get all, but in namespace youngling. So as you can see here, I have again the same resources deployed to my, to my cluster. However, in this case, I am in the youngling namespace. So as you can see, you can use customize to deploy the different resources depending on your environment, you can specify which namespace, which environment variables and which resources it should use actually for the deployment of within that environment. And that's what makes customize, I guess, so handy. Now, this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Also, you might want to check out the Notion notes link below. And if you watch this far, it must be that you want to learn Kubernetes and or get started in DevOps. So you might want to subscribe to my weekly newsletter, free delivered to your inbox with amazing resources from across the DevOps space from amazing people such as yourself. Check it out below. Anyway, I really hope to see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.